Oh, guys, welcome back. Um, quick little video. I'd said about, um, if you remember my last one, if you watched it, if you didn't, then go back and watch it. Why didn't you watch it? <laughs> anyway, if you didn't watch it, I said about I changed my chuck jaws over on this one because I had the rounded ones. Um, but I was going to get in a while. Uh, yesterday morning, I went on, I got ordered another one from Snayton Woodworking Supplies. All it yesterday morning, come today. So another chuck. So I put my jaws back on. And I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to drill down the centre. Because I saw, um, I said Pete from Twisted Trees. I was going to actually put some little grind marks in them. But I saw Pete from Twisted Trees. And he said about drilling them. So I thought, yeah, actually, that sounds like a good idea. I should have thought of that. But I didn't. So I'm going to do it. Now, I did do a little bit of a test. 5.5. He used a 5. They don't 5. I'm going to go for a 6 mil. I think I've measured doing this one. And that's a 6 mil. So I want 6 mil. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But the problem with it, sorry, I'm talking a bit fast. I seem to be a bit fast. Get a breath in there. Take a breather. <laughs> right. Sorry. Um, yeah. So what I found with these is when when I'm doing like finials, because it's only small chucks, so I don't want to wrench down on it all the time. When you tighten it, it's if you give it a now there. See now that's moved. look. I can actually take that out. Because there's no no grip there, so what you end up doing is you know I keep tightening down. I don't want to be doing that, so that's why I'm doing this. They're good jaws um, for for finials. Nothing much else because you can't grip on the outside of them um, unless you had a pot. I suppose you could put over and get a bit of grip if you just want to use it for polishing it or doing something like that. But anyway, so what I'm going to do? I'm going to tighten it down. Right, so it's tightened up. I'm going to put. Six mil drill bit in my chuck, and we go for it, and we'll see what happens. All right, okay. I did start a little bit with, with a 5.5, but it wasn't the right size. Well, I'm going to slow the lathe down, take it right down to nothing, and we're going to see what happens. Get that turning. Now I'm going to put my face shield on because obviously if that catches, I don't that bits of metal could fly anywhere. So. Be safe, guys. Put your face shields on. Lisa's got right. a face shield now as well. <laughs> I'm going to turn that about. I'm at basically at about. I'm at a thousand RPM. I don't want to be too slow with it. I'm just going to very slowly. Things are going all right. Very slowly drilling in. Right, I'll see what I'm actually going to do. Um, you can't reach it. I just want to get my WD40. I do like to just try a little bit of a drill bit. Um, really. Right, I'm going to do it. The cure for everything, this stuff, WD40. Good to put on your fishing bait as well. Lo white and love it. Going through, guys. Right, so no drama. Right, there we go. Right, okay, so that's given me a nice little couple of nice little grooves there. Alright, oh. can you put my WD on that table for me, darling? Thank you. Right, okay, so that's given me a couple of nice uh, few nice grooves in it so we see how that see what it does like now what that does like <laughs> he says oh, I don't like that very much thank you <laughs> all right and obviously we clean that metal off the lathe as well because uh, Don't want that getting under me 
banjo when I move it. Right, so there we go. I've got some nice grooves down it now. That worked quite well, I think. Right, let's see what that does. I'll put it onto the fresh side. And we'll see how that there you can see how it bites in now. Right, there we go. So yeah, sorted. That ain't moving now. Look at that. <laughs> hey, that ain't gonna move now. So there you go, guys. If you've got these jaws and you do have that problem, yeah, look, you can see that bites in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think they're good if you're doing stuff where you don't want any marks. But for me, no, that's that's better. And I don't know what that's gonna be like if I can get. Let's go out to its full. Oh yeah, look at that. You can actually get with a six mil drill bit. Oh, that's even better. Look at that, I can get on the corners. I can actually get on the corners of each piece now. So I don't have to have it flat in the jaws. I can actually grip that. I can actually grip that on the corners. And look, that's lovely and stable, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice, that. Let's just have a quick, let me just quickly, 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 quickly. Just um, do a little twiddle on that. Well, that speed I won't. That's better. All right. Um, yeah, I've also I've been uh, changing things around a bit. I've changed all the handles on my skews. I put my own handles on them. No, it's still come out. Look at that. <laughs> what bugger? Right, okay, so it's not good holding it on that bit. I wanted to test it. That's what I had happening before, see? Right, yeah, it pulled it out. Right, let's go that way round. So it's good to test these things. Right, so we go that way and see what happens. Right, there we go. We've got it. Now let's see what happens again. Someone did ask me, actually, oh, let's get back to coming with a long point. Coming with a long point, let's see one. Look at that. Coming with a long point. Someone did ask me about the skip bat I was getting on the balls the other day when I was turning it. When I said, wouldn't that ball, it's a gun ball. Well, the reason is, is because I had my tool rest. With the tool rest as low as I had it, the trouble I had, and the trouble I have here, is trying to keep trying to keep on the bevel because with a skew turning a small ball like this it, it unless you've got a very very I mean you can do it on the point like this but really unless you've got a very very short bevel it is really hard to actually stay on the on the bevel so of course then if you come here look see as soon as you come here, it's gonna kick it's gonna kick back. And that's if you're coming in this way. The only way you can do it is if you can get on top and you can ride that bevel around it. If you can get the bevel to ride round, it'll be alright. It's so many doing slopes, but for really small balls like that, it's it's not really a good idea to do it. I tend to use a, a spindle gouge for doing that, but I'm gonna do we're going to do a couple of bits anyway, because I've been doing some, I've been doing some topiary actually, believe it or not. <laughs> Again on the Christmas themes, doing little bits for me. Yeah, so when you're doing like little, if you're doing small little balls like that, it's, it's the skew's not really the best tool for it, really. It's a, I know people do it, but I mean you see some of these on um, 
Facebook and stuff like that. I mean, what you've got to remember is they, they're production turners and they turn every day with a skew. I've been doing for 30 odd years, so they should be able to do what they're doing. You know, if I, I, I very rarely use a skew. It's not one of my favorite tools, actually. It's, I prefer a spindle gouge to a, to a skew chisel for most of my work. Um, I use a skew, but for me personally, I prefer a spindle gouge. I find it a far, a far, far better tool. It, it's more versatile. I, I, for me personally, you can do bowls with it. You can do spindle work with it. You can do, you can do everything with it really. But a skew has its place. Don't, don't get me wrong. Learn to use one. It's a lovely tool. It's a lovely tool, but it can can be a a, a bugger at times and all. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, I've been doing some toe priests. I thought you might like to see, uh, see what I was actually doing. They're just some little bits for Christmas, that's all. I'll just grab my toys out a little quickly. I, I do spray them as well. I just want the red and the green. So I've got those. Get those at the ready, so I've got them. Right, okay. So, first off, I'm gonna rough this down. Now, as I always say, for me, Roughing down, roughing gouge, always. And yes, I actually changed that as well and put that in my own handle, look at that. <laughs> so yeah, I've been changing tools about. Fortunately, I'll get, so what I don't like, personally, I've got rid of most of them now. Uh, I've got a couple of, couple of them here. I don't like these handles. I never have. Um, I don't like handles that go thin down here like this. I, I, I just, they don't suit me personally. I like, I like a, 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 a thicker handle. Um, I mean, it's like this one, you get, you know, they all, they come down here. I just don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I am slowly changing all my tools. Um, I had two roughing gouges, both, uh, well, one was a Henry Taylor, one was Axminster. The Axminster one had a very thin handle. This one's, I'm keeping this one, that's all right. It's, it's a nice, Nice size handle, so that's that's okay, that one. Um, so I should keep that. The other one I've changed over, I'm gonna change over my beading pint and tool, because that, again, I don't like that bit. Too too small for me, I don't like it. It's not comfortable when I'm turning. I've already changed changed this one ages ago, because I had a handle that come out, it had all this markings on it, so I just kept it nice and chunky, and, and that that's, for me, that, that suits, suits me, if it's nice and comfortable in my hand. So yeah, I'm changing them all, slowly getting there. Um, the record power ones, I don't mind. Uh, I've got a couple of record power, so I don't mind them. They don't go quite so thin, so that's not too bad. Although saying that, I'll probably end up changing them. Get all my own handles on. So, but doing that, I have actually freed up another three spaces, so I've got room for another three, three tools. So that'd be handy. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, guys, so I'm going to rough this down, do a bit, a bit of topiary. A bit of speed. A bit lower than I want to be. I'm just going to come up a little bit. One more. That's it, we're round. So I just want to come up to this stuff. Up there. Right, okay. Now, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to taper it a little bit first. Just quicker for me to do it like that. Yeah. Right, now, um, I'm actually going to do this with a bit of a carbide at first. Now, the carbide chisel, especially the square one, believe it or not, is actually a bit easier to turn a ball with. Being the fact that it's got a very small bevel. So you, that, 
when you're on that, that bevel can stay in contact all the way around. When you've got the skew, when you've got the skew here, see, that bevel can't, there's no way that full bevel can stay in contact on the wood, it's too big. It's got to come off. As soon as that edge catches, bang, that's a skip back. It'll happen every time, it's just, just what happens. So, right, okay, now, we've got to be turning that a bit smaller than that, that's a bit big for the top thing, so we've got to come in, let's do some cuts here. Like this. Take it down a little bit. Right. Well, he's in the way a little bit there. Right, I'm just going to bring that down to a flat because it's a bit big for what I want. Right, okay. So now I'm going to bring this down. Now if you come in and you just ride it down like this, you'll get nice smooth cuts. That's nice and smooth there. Don't leave no sanding. Because you're not going to be wanting to do a bit of sandpaper if you do one of these. Right, I'm going to come up a little bit with my tool rest. Just a little bit, but I don't want to get... I don't want to be getting skipped back. Now you can see how much above centre I am, I'm near enough on the top of the wood. Which is what I should have done the other day with the beading parting tool. Right, and now we go this side. Ah, little ski, I've just come off of it, I've come off the bevel. And again, right, keep on the bevel, keep on the bevel. There we are, we're on the bevel, right. I'm out of state, I've still got room. Right, so we've got that, right, I'm just gonna come around that front edge, just like that, just take that line out. Right, that's that. Come around that front edge, right, okay. Now, I wanna bring this down. A little bit more. We're going to come in here. Got a round bar, so it's it's catching a little bit. Right. Let me get rid of. Hang on. Let me just get rid of some of this wood at the side here. Right, that's got one. Round scissors. You can do it a bit quicker like that. Right, okay. Well, work out what I'm doing here. Right, okay. So, I'm going to bring this down. Then another ball here, see? Nice and careful, you take your time there. You can roll that down. Okay. Remember, this is all being done with a square carbide chisel. This. Right, now, I've got to come down here a bit. I'm going to put another ball on this side, see? I'm probably going to have to bring this diameter down a bit. I've got no plan for this, I'm just going as I'm going, alright? Get that a little bit smaller. Just like that. That's it. And then I'm going to go. Bring this round again. Come down here. Bring this side round. Come in at that point. Now we don't want to skip back at this point. Right, okay, that's good. Right, now I've got to come down here. Actually, I need a parting tool. I need to put a little bit of a flat in there. 
too much at the moment because I ain't finished cutting yet. Right, I'll get this full shape now. Come in and get those edges. Get that top edge away. There we go. Right, yeah, we're nice and smooth. Right, okay. I want to bring this down a little bit more. Just about that. Right, oh, come up here. That's in the wood steel pipe in there. When you're coming down with a round bar, you get on that side, you really feel it kick. That's why I don't like round bars with square chisels, only when I'm doing this. A little bit more. Come on, go in front, go in front, go in front, go in front, go in front. That's it. Right, okay, that's my bucket. The bottom. Right, uh, clean that up. Right, now what we're going to do. I'm going to come round, I'm going to have to do the same. Hang on. There we are. We can only come to the middle. Right there, now we have to start down this side. Go for that, and now we've got to go this side. I should have done these really beforehand, but I didn't want to see you to see me do it. Okay. There we go. Right, so now I will very quickly I'll do the darker colour first. I'm going to actually
Do that, Red. And we're going to go over the top with a bit of green. Yeah, there we go. You're actually going brown. You can see. If you're wondering how you're going to make brown, there you go. Let's do a leaf out of that and then part of the uh, it's all off. Sorry? No, because the snow's up the top, so I can do the snow uh, later. Mm -hmm. I can do the snow. I've got to put my tools back. That's it. Put the top bit there. That's all right. Right, so, and I'll just sand that bottom like I did the other ones on me sanding thing. And there you go. I wasn't actually going to make it out of that um, one like that, really, but I, I went for that stroke, so there you go. And these are going to stand around when I do my Polar Express. I've got, uh, why am I shouting? <laughs> Hold up, guys. Hang on. Right, uh, yeah, so when I do my Polar Express, I'm then going to... I've got some of these. I've been turning a load of them. I've got these little topiary ones as well see so i'll probably do a rabbit or something next that's With, that, that'd be a good one wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> right so then yeah how long are we done on that 26 right. well, just I'll about gonna stop in at that because then they upload really quick and what yeah. i'll do is i'll bring you back and we'll do another one and we'll do a little little pot of sand like that right so all i'll do is pop that on there it sits on the chuck And there you go, cleans the air bottom up. And that will, if I get the dust off of it, and that stands up on there. Right, so there you go, guys. That's another one done. And we'll do, yeah, on this uh, little sanding disc, or have these, they come, they're the record power ones. They just fit straight on your little face plate rings. They just fit over their dovetail, and they just fit over your jaws. And with those, they fit on all your jaws. So they're, they're pretty good with uh, again record power i don't work for them honest <laughs> they're nothing to do with me <laughs> i just think they are fantastic quality right okay i'll see you on the next one guys toodle pip bye guys